problem I want to have a look at is this idea of projection. Now again, in first year maths, you learned how to do projections of one vector onto another. Now we're extending that concept a little bit, and we're going to talk about the projection of a vector onto a subspace. A vector onto a subspace. Now, I strongly recommend that there was no drop diagram given in the question, but I strongly recommend you think about these problems geometrically. It makes life much easier to do that. There's a way of writing down a magic formula that you can construct. You can construct a complicated matrix from these two, and then you can, um, if you can remember off the formula, then you can multiply it by this and get the answer and so on. It's all very complicated and not... Um, not a particularly nice way of attacking the problem. It doesn't give you much insight into what's happening either. So when we talk about the projection, this subspace spanned by these two vectors. They're obviously linearly independent, so they're going to span a plane in R3, passing through the origin. So I now give you the vector x, which is up here. And we want to talk about the projection of that onto the subspace, that is geometrically just you shine a torch down on this vector and you look at its shadow on the plane. And that vector, this vector OA here, that's going to be the projection of X onto the subspace W. Now what I do with this is I just stare at the picture for a bit and say, well look, I can write the vector OX, that's the vector X that I'm given, I can write that as OA, that's what I want to get my hands on, that's the vector OA, that's the projection, plus the vector AX. Now ultimately I don't really care too much about AX, so I'm going to leave AX as it is. don't really care too much about what that vector is. However, OA, so o vector OX is X, OA I can construct because the vector OA lies on the plane so I can build it from the two basis vectors on the plane. So I can construct OA as something times 1, 2, 2 plus something times 2, 1, minus 2. And remember, that's what I want to get my hands on. That's the projection. That's what I'm interested in. So if I can work out lambda and mu, then I've got what I'm looking for. Plus well, I've got this other vector AX that doesn't interest me greatly, but i better put it in. Now, what I want to do is to get my hands on the lambda and mu. And now I'm going to use the orthogonality idea. So, I'm going to dot product. I'm going to dot product both sides of this with the vector 1, 2, 2. Because remember that this vector here, so that one's 1, 2, 2, this is perpendicular to AX. So when I dot product AX with 1, 2, 2, that term's going to disappear. So when I do that, I get 1, 2, 2 dotted with 2, 9, 4, that's my X. I get lambda times 1, 2, 2 dotted with 1, 2, 2 plus mu times 2, 1, minus 2 dotted with 1, 2, 2. So I just dot product both sides. Now, that gives me 10 over there when you do the dot product. Just check the arithmetic. You get 18 minus 8 plus 2. Over here, I get 4, 8, 9 lambda. And it happens that these two vectors here are perpendicular. So when you dot product, you get 2 times 2 is 4, minus 4 is 0, so happily the mu disappears altogether. Now let me just check my arithmetic here. Oh, well, this is not right here, is it? So that one should be 12. Always worth checking your double checking your arithmetic. So 18 minus 8 is 10, plus 2 is 12. So that means I can get my hands on lambda at the moment. It's just going to be 4 thirds. So we'll hold that thought. And by the way, let me just pause for a second here. This worked very, very nicely because these vectors turned out to be perpendicular. So these vectors were, in fact, at right angles to each other. Even if that doesn't happen, even in the cases when that doesn't happen, well, then you'll end up with an equation with lambdas and mu's in it. 
and you can get another set of equations we're going to get in a moment, and then you could solve that from there. Here, happily, these two vectors turned out to be at right angles in the first place. So I'm also going to dot product uh, 2, 1, minus 2 with, on both sides. So that gives me, um, well, when I'm up, dot product this one with this one, I'm going to get 0. And I'm going to get mu times 2, 1, minus 2 dot producted with itself. And again, I'm going to get zero with this one because that's already orthogonal to it. Again, I'm going to do some arithmetic here. So I get, um, that's eight, and nine is 17, and four is 21. And over the other side, I get, again, nine lambda, uh, nine mu, I should say. And that tells me mu then is going to be seven thirds. So we'll hold that thought. Finally then, remember what we wanted, we wanted this, just this expression. So the projection then of x onto the subspace w, this is just the vector OA, and we know what that is now. That's going to be lambda, which was 4 thirds times 1, 2, 2 plus 7 thirds times 2, 1 minus 2. And when I put this over a common denominator, what do I get? 14 plus, that's 18, that's 6. Um, so I'm going to get 8 plus 7 is 15, that's 5. And I get 8 uh, minus 14 is minus 6, which is minus 2. I'll just check my arithmetic, and that looks good. And so that vector then is the projection of this vector x onto the subspace. So the main steps in it, think of the problem geometrically, draw some pictures, and use dot products, use orthogonality, in order to be able to get rid of this vector here and calculate what the coefficients are. If you were given a basis here that was not um, uh, an um, orthogonal basis, well, you can still do the same method except you'll end up with an equation with lambdas and mu's here, an equation with lambdas and mu's here, and you can always solve those simultaneously anyway and find out lambda and mu. So this method will work in many different situations.